subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon, to never miss a video from us. Hi everyone, today we have with us Dr. Vageshwari Deswal. She is an academician, author, feminist and activist working as a professor at Faculty of Law, University of Delhi. An accomplished scholar awarded gold medals at National Merit and National Merit Scholarship during her student days. Dr. Vageshwari Deswal has over two decades of teaching experience and is recognized globally for her work in the area of criminal law and gender justice. She has been quoted extensively by the government authorities in Canada, Australia, Hong Kong and also by Punjab and Haryana High Court. We seek her guidance and to learn more and to share and we request her to share her experiences with our viewers. We welcome you to the expert interview series, ma'am. Thank you, Anandita, for this elaborate and kind introduction. God has been kind. Now, it has been a rewarding journey. Psychologically, emotionally, there is a sense of satisfaction that I could do what I wanted to. You know, work is fun when you love what you do. Reaching out to people, clarifying legal doubts without being too imposing. I strongly believe that teaching is a two-way process. See, the content for most of my talks or blogs, it all comes from my classroom interaction with my students. It is extremely stimulating to have challenging questions thrown at you and then respond with equally thought-provoking answers that further inspires your students to delve deeper into the topic. Law was a natural choice for me. My mother is a senior practicing lawyer. She belongs to the era when we had very few women who practiced law and it was largely a male-dominated profession. She inspired me to be myself. Never allow yourselves to be bogged down by what others expect of you. Choose wisely. I mean, go with what you believe is right, morally, ethically, and then stand by your choice, even if that means standing alone. As a child, I would observe her counseling her clients. The way she talked to them, uh, helped them, explained all the pros and cons of going ahead with the litigation. The objective was never to make money. It was always to ensure that the clients knew what was happening, that they could have a say in the way the case was proceeding and did not feel alienated or cheated by a formalistic legal system. Uh, we live in a patriarchal society and the hegemony of patriarchy is not easy to shrug off. The gender stereotypes that cloud our understanding need to be demolished. We need to understand that men and women are biologically different, but that doesn't mean that one is superior to the other. Nature has created diversity. But we humans have discriminated on the basis of that diversity. For gender sensitization, people need to understand the difference between sex and gender. These two terms, they are not the same. They cannot and they should not be used interchangeably. Sex is the biological differentiation between women and men, which is determined by genetics. It refers to the different biological and physiological characteristics of males and females, such as reproductive organs, chromosomes, hormones, whereas the concept of gender is a social construct that is unique to humans. Majority of our people conform to the conventional two categories, male and female. But gender is a spectrum, and there are people who fall outside the conventional categories. So we use cisgender as a term, to those who identify mentally with the sex that we are assigned at birth and transgender is one whose assigned birth sex does not match the gender of their mind. Through this process of socialization, society provides a gender identity to males and females. So gender, it refers to the socially constructed roles, behaviors, activities and attributes 
that a society considers appropriate for women and men. And gender stereotypes, they are common perceptions or assumptions about the characteristics of a person and they are based on false and unproven hypotheses. So gender stereotypes, these are social and cultural constructions of women and men due to their different physical, biological, sexual and social functions. They are rooted in our traditional notions about roles and status of women and men in society. So we have these preconceived ideas whereby males and females, they are arbitrarily assigned characteristics and roles which are determined by and also limited by their sex. Although such views may have changed with time, the underlying assumptions about women's appropriate role in a family, in a community, they still endure in many societies. So we need to deconstruct those stereotypes and we need to understand that human nature, it involves a blend of male and female attributes. Sex differences, they are merely biological. They by themselves have no social, economic or political significance. And that is something which each of us needs to, each one of us needs to understand. Gender sensitivity training. See, catch them young. Start early. Raise a sensitized generation. The first school of every child is the home. We need to look inwards, challenge and change the old practices and prejudices that impart one gender a lesser value than the other. Every person needs to understand that household codes are not predetermined by gender. Similarly, Contributing to the family, whether it is financially, physically, emotionally, it is something which men can also do and women can also do. Schools also need to rewrite their curriculum. We need to replace our old stories which depict girls as dancers in distress, waiting for some prince to rescue them, or depicting traditional patriarchal families as the only ideal family setup. See, language that discriminates. For example, the gender opposite of master is mistress, which is a derogatory term. All this needs to be checked and effaced from our course books and we need to replace it with more contemporary literature that talks about gender equality, intrinsic human worth. Our movies, our series, video games, they all need to be properly censored and regressive content needs to be discouraged. We have to stop glamorizing stalking of women. We need to check indecent lyrics that objectify women. We need to challenge gender-specific toys that make girls have unrealistic expectations about their body types or skin tones and toys or games that make boys more aggressive, more destructive. So gender sensitization is the most important aspect of personality development in contemporary times. We have conveniently categorized all humankind into two conventional categories, male and female. And anything that does not fit into these two categories or those people who have alternate sexualities or non-conventional identities, they are disturbing for most of us and we consider it abnormal, non-natural. So for transgenders, discrimination begins at birth. It continues throughout school. Families are not supportive. They are ashamed of having a child whom they consider abnormal. They resort to beatings, humiliations, corrective rapes, medical treatments, other treatments, and what not to make the child believe in what it has been told by the society regarding his or her identity. Many children run away from their families. There are cases where children are also thrown out by their parents due to these clashes. Despite having laws that prohibit such discrimination, there is a reluctance on part of institutions to admit such children. They are subjected to ridicule by their classmates, sometimes by insensitive teachers also, who impose their own notions of gender and sexuality upon them. The society is reluctant to accept them. They seldom get invites for any get-togethers. People are reluctant to make them a part of their social group. 
Then there are these infrastructural handicaps such as lack of separate washrooms at public places. All this compels them to conceal their identities and lead dual lives. These children, they go into depression. Sometimes they develop criminal tendencies. And then such depressed children who are uh, like withdrawn into themselves, such children are easy prey for sex predators and traffickers who might be sometimes their relatives or sometimes complete strangers. So what we need to do is we need to move beyond tokenism. See, just making a single law that, and then faltering in its implementation, framing a few policies for the namesake, this is not sufficient. It is highly pertinent to integrate all humans as equals in the society. POSH is a very, very progressive legislation that protects women from any kind of sexual harassment or discrimination based on gender at the workplace. Now, this is a gender-specific law that protects only women, but the perpetrator or accused can be anyone. See, the perpetrator of sexual harassment may be a man, a woman, or even a trans person. And the best part is that, unlike the Shakha, which was elitist, this is a law which is not blind to majority of our women who work in the unorganized sector. So we have internal committees in all workplaces having 10 or more employees. And then we have local committees for every district that cater to women working as domestic workers and on small construction sites or on farms. So what this law does is, it mandates every employer to frame an anti-sexual harassment policy, constitute a local, uh, a constitute an internal committee, and then display all this information on its website or any other conspicuous place at the workplace. Additionally, they are also obligated to organize gender sensitization workshops for their employees so that everybody understands what is acceptable and what is unacceptable conduct. The inquiry process has also been made time-bound and has to be conducted with utmost regard to privacy. And during the pendency of the proceedings, if the woman wants any interim relief, she can seek transfer or leave. There is a provision also for conciliation, but that is only at the behest of the complainant and also only in the initial stages. And the law expressly forbids any monetary consideration for conciliation, as it was feared that women could misuse the law and target men with deep pockets and then withdraw false complaints after extorting any kind of money from them. So another important step to check the misuse of this gender-specific law is that this law provides penalty for the complainant woman also. If it can be proven by the accused that the complaint of sexual harassment was false and malicious. So this has all been done to discourage false complaints also. See, when we talk about non-compliance, first we need to understand what constitutes non-compliance. That is like if the employer does not constitute an internal committee, or if he sits on the inquiry report, if he does not take action on the report, whether it is recommended against the respondent or the complainant, or where the organization does not submit its annual report to the district officer, or if they uh, divulge any details of the complainant and all these things, so if they contravene any other provision or rule of the act, then it all constitutes a non-compliance for which there is a prescribed penalty of rupees 50,000 in the first instance, double the punishment in case of repeat or non-compliance, and even after that, if there is an instance of non-compliance, then there is provision for cancellation, withdrawal, or non-approval of license or registration for carrying on any business trade or activity. See, sexual harassment, it is an invisible offense. The society refuses to acknowledge it until it erupts into something more violent such as rape. 
And that is the time when we sit up and take notice that, oh, this is something that we needed to have controlled earlier. See, we have normalized e teasing, stalking, etc. as a normal male flirtatious behavior. And women who take offense, they are labeled as oversensitive. One who is making a mountain out of a molehill. Many times women are not aware that what is happening amounts to sexual harassment that can be complained against. Because all this has been so normalized by the society. And then there is the stigma. We as a society, we are very quick to judge people, especially our women. What was she wearing? Who was she talking to? I mean, so all these things, we are very quick to judge the victim instead of the accused person. And then there is this excruciatingly long and painful journey of registering a complaint, relieving the ordeal several times. So there are these multiple demotivating factors for women. Many times, even the accused is unaware of the uncomfortable situation in which he is putting the woman. So, posh training has been mandated in all the departments in order to tide over the numerous challenges to realization of equitable treatment for women. See, it is imperative for the state to design its programs, formulate its policies in a way so as to educate and sensitize all our people while providing opportunities for skill enhancement, employment, self-development. See, what is required is to inculcate a human rights sensitive conscience, construct and sustain an atmosphere of mutual respect, unity, concern and well-being of each one of our fellow humans irrespective of their gender. Law is a career that is very, very demanding. It needs rigorous and extensive studies. You need to continuously update yourself with the latest legislative amendments, judicial pronouncements, and then also stay connected with legal developments at the international level. In contemporary times, rather than the cyber age, we need to prepare and equip our younger generation to deal with global issues that might involve multiple jurisdictions. Law is a very challenging field to be in, but it does open up a huge range of career options. You may choose to be a litigating lawyer, work in some legal firm, become a legal advisor, a social worker, a researcher, an academician, a judicial officer, a defense personnel, or anything else. It's a noble profession. Law gives you the opportunity to help people get justice. Don't make money your goal. Do your bit. Money will follow. Legal profession does not guarantee overnight success. The journey is tough, especially for first-generation lawyers. But perseverance is the key. As they say, dreams don't work unless you do. And if you are prepared to work hard, then yes, this is the career for you. And the world is your oyster. Choosing one petition. Okay. So as Mother Teresa famously said, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the water to create many ripples. So whenever, wherever I speak, if my words can touch even a single person, make them think and challenge their old stereotypes, prejudices and discriminatory practices. I think my job is done. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss a video from us.